They look simple enough, these workhorses that move pallets, skids, and all kinds of materials. A walkie, a walkie rider, a transporter, a pallet truck, or a platform truck, whatever you call them, they save hours of backbreaking labor every day. anybody could grab a walkie or use a walkie rider. Now, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, calls for in-depth training and performance testing. Why? Because about 100 people are killed and almost 95,000 are injured while operating powered industrial trucks each year. You've probably seen accidents where you work. Somebody catches a foot or hand between a walkie rider and a post. Or maybe they're jammed between the control head and the wall. Or they slide off a loading dock. And let's not forget feet. How about running over your foot with a hard-wheeled vehicle carrying thousands of pounds? In fact, walkies and walkie riders are among the most dangerous materials handling equipment you can use, precisely because they don't look dangerous. That's why training rules that apply to the largest forklift trucks also apply to any powered walkie, walkie rider, pallet, or platform truck. If it's powered, you'll receive classroom training and hands-on practice. That includes operators of walkies, walkie riders, transporters, pallet trucks, and platform trucks. Your employer evaluates your ability to operate safely under all the conditions where you work. And you'll get refresher training if you have an accident or a near miss, or if you operate in an unsafe manner. At least every three years, your proficiency and safe operation will be evaluated. You'll be trained again if you fail an evaluation, if your work conditions change, or if you're assigned to operate a different type of equipment. The training you need depends on your equipment, your work, and your workplace but all training falls into two general categories, equipment-related and workplace-related. First, let's look at your equipment. Walkies are designed to move materials on pallets a short horizontal distance at a normal walking speed of about three miles per hour. Walkie riders can move materials a longer distance because the operator can ride on the platform hold the high-speed bar, and travel at 9 or 10 miles per hour. Both walkies and walkie riders have pallet arms that look like forks with wheels near the ends. The wheels pivot on the forks, and a link pushes the wheels against the floor to lift the forks. When raised, forks stay parallel to the floor. They don't tilt like forks on a high-lift truck. None of these vehicles is designed to lift or stack a load, only to raise it a few inches above the floor and move it from one place to another. Many low-lift trucks are designed with custom features based on their intended use. For example, some have a coast control that keeps the machine moving while the operator jumps off and on to assemble orders. Others have a cradle to handle drums while some come with eight-foot-long forks so they can move two pallets at once. The vehicle you drive to work operates differently from your powered industrial truck. Low-lift powered industrial trucks steer and maneuver like forklifts. They have a three-point suspension system with drive wheel under the chassis at the base of the tiller. The other two wheels, the load wheels, are on the ends of the pallet arms or under the front edge of the platform on a platform truck. Because of their three-point suspension, all low-lift trucks can lean on turns and bottom out on uneven surfaces. They have stability casters or bars that ride about a quarter inch above the floor when the machine is level, but are designed to stabilize it if it starts to tip. Unfortunately, stability casters and bars also catch feet, toes, and other obstructions. 
and they can't keep you from toppling over the edge of a loading dock or a ramp. A slippery or sloped surface or an uneven edge can cause big trouble for the operator who isn't well trained and paying close attention to the job. All low lift trucks have tiller steering with controls on the handle, usually called the control head. Controls include forward, reverse, lift, and lower. To activate the truck, you move the handle downward to the middle range. If you let it go, it springs upright, cuts the power, and applies the brakes. If you lower it, it also applies the brakes and stops the truck. You steer by moving the tiller side to side, much as you would a handle on a child's wagon. If you move it slow and steady and take turns wide, you'll avoid scraping corners and doorways and keep your load more stable. You also want to walk to the side of the walkie to stay out of its line of travel at all times. Both walkies and walkie riders are notorious pinners and can pin you between the tiller handle and a wall. If this happens, the handle tends to ride up under the operator's rib cage and cause serious injury. That's why newer equipment has a belly button switch that shifts the machine into reverse if it contacts an object or the operator. But regardless of the equipment you use, always walk to one side of the walkie so the handle won't pin you or run up on you as you walk. Because all trucks and detachments are different, you must learn the information in the operator's manual for the truck you use. Along with your training, it helps you become an expert operator. Check the data plate on the vehicle. It tells you the capacity and other information about the truck. Never exceed truck capacity. It's dangerous and can cause unnecessary repairs and equipment downtime. To be qualified to operate a low lift truck, you must show you understand and can operate all the controls on the type of truck you're using. How to start, stop, steer, and maneuver safely. You'll also learn to perform a pre-use inspection. Most facilities use a standard checklist where you check off items as you inspect them. You or your maintenance department needs to check the battery periodically for damage, corrosion, tight connections, and make sure vent holes are clean. Remember, you're working with acid, so wear protective equipment. If the battery's okay, check the truck for damage and proper operation. Check pallet arms, draw bars, tiller and tires. Check to make sure controls and indicators are working. Then put the truck through normal maneuvers, checking lift, brakes, and steering. If anything doesn't appear safe or right, or if you hear any unusual noises, report the problem to your supervisor. You may need to use another machine. Never try to fix it yourself. Up to now, we've talked about your equipment, but you also need to know how to maneuver it safely through your workplace. Even though every workplace is different, lots of precautions apply no matter where you drive. Work with your employer to practice using your lift truck until you're familiar with how it turns, moves, reverses, and stops. Remember that inertia works against you any time you change direction or start or stop. That means a load moving in one direction tries to keep going in that direction regardless of what you do. If you make all moves slowly, you won't lose your load as you change direction or stop. Never try to move a load unless you're sure it's stable and within the capacity limits of your vehicle. It's your job to check the data plate. Always stabilize a shaky load before you move it. Your options are shrink wrapping, blocking, banding, or cross tying. You also should inspect pallets for broken deck boards or runners and loose nails before you pick them up. Stack unused pallets flat and separate any that need to be repaired or discarded. To avoid the risk of fire, it's always safest to store unused pallets outdoors. When you're ready to move a load, approach the pallet squarely. Space the forks evenly on either side of the center stringer. Move in reverse 
until the forks are under the pallet and the load is against the chassis. Use the lift control to pull the wheels back and downward and raise the load. Once you're sure the load is secure, move forward with the forks raised. It is recommended that you always pull the walkie. Never lead with your forks through a doorway or into a blind area like an aisle. When you enter a tight spot where you won't have room to turn around, back the truck in and travel in forward on the way out. The same goes for moving into trailers or elevators. Back in and move out in forward. This keeps you from being hit by the handle or trapped against a wall. Horseplay and misuse are common accident causes. Never try to ride on a walkie or let anyone else ride on equipment you're operating. Never use your truck to push or tow another vehicle or use the forks to push doors or hoist things. Not only do you risk serious injury, you can also damage your equipment. Some design features of low-lift trucks make them very hazardous in certain situations. Because they have hard, solid tires, they skid and slide easily on wet or oily surfaces. Add this to the fact that they're commonly used on outdoor loading docks, and you have a recipe for disaster. So be very careful and stay well back from the edge on docks, platforms, and ramps. Keep your speed down and make all moves smoothly and slowly. It is safest on ramps to keep your load on the downhill side. This means you go up with the load in back of you and down with the load in front. Never try to turn on a ramp or slope. Wait until you get to a level spot before turning your truck around. On docks, keep dock boards or bridge plates clean and as level as possible. Check to see that they're secure and attached properly. Be sure the floor and plates are strong enough to support the weight of your truck, the load, and you. Make certain rail cars and trailers won't roll forward when you drive onto them. Chalk wheels, set brakes, and use dock locks before you enter. Hand and foot injuries are painful reminders to work safely. On a walkie rider, keep your feet and hands within the confines of the truck. A passing vehicle, a post, or some other obstacle can crush your leg or hand in an instant. On a walkie, keep your hands to the center of the control head. Watch how you move on turns to avoid scraping your hands or being hit by the tiller. Keep your feet well back from wheels and stability casters and bars. Many units have wheeled guards which don't always completely protect you. You also can protect yourself by wearing required protective equipment. In most situations, you'll need foot protection and may need other PPE like a hard hat, gloves, noise protection, or a respirator. That's why it's smart to find out about hazards and required safety precautions before entering any unfamiliar area. Never attempt to operate with wet or greasy hands. The same goes for boots and platform. You're already standing in a tight space on a moving vehicle. Keep your shoes and platform clean to provide sure footing. When traveling, watch for pedestrians and stay out of walkways and other areas marked for foot traffic. Remember that pedestrians always have the right of way. Avoid speeding and always adjust your speed for conditions. A good rule is to keep your speed slow enough to stop quickly without sliding or toppling your load. Never block exits or access routes that others may need to reach product or materials. If you leave the vehicle, park it in a designated area out of traffic, set the brake, and take the key with you. At the end of your shift, or when you're finished with the truck, take it to the charging area and park it as directed. If you recharge your truck or change batteries, be sure to follow proper procedures. And before you begin, always locate a fire extinguisher and the nearest exit just in case something goes wrong. In the last few minutes, we've looked at low-lift trucks from many different angles. We've discussed your training, 
and topics related to your truck and workplace. Coupled with your hands-on training, there's a lot of information to absorb and it takes a lot of work to put it into practice. But training is only part of working safely. The other part is avoiding complacency. The minute a job gets automatic, the minute you stop paying attention is the minute someone gets hurt. So take the advice of a lot of old timers. Look at each job, each move and load as a new challenge and give it your best effort. Not only will you avoid complacency, but you'll be much safer.